Il se passe quoi là ah Vous dites quoi à la guerre On va danser au concours Je danse avec vous. Quoi Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. I apologize for my lengthy absence. I recently started a new position at work, and that's just led to my free time falling straight off of a cliff. My workload has nearly doubled, which has left me basically no time to make videos. Well, to make videos that I actually want to put out. I know my quality isn't the best to begin with, but I mean, I would like to maintain a certain level of mediocrity. I'm gonna try my best to keep everything on track. I just feel really bad that I haven't had a lot of time to invest in the channel, so I really appreciate everyone's patience. It really means a lot to me, so I'm gonna do my best to keep putting out videos as frequently as I possibly can. So, what wakes me from my ancient slumber, you ask? Netflix being the corporate equivalent of ass cancer, of course. There was once a time where I would have never have considered canceling my Netflix subscription. I mean, where else am I going to binge watch The Office and Parks and Rec for the 10th trillionth time? Then Netflix started releasing some pretty interesting originals, as well as saving some series that I actually enjoyed from cancellation. Look at Star Wars The Clone Wars and Arrested Development, albeit with differing degrees of success. While Netflix has been pretty hit or miss with their originals, there is no denying that they have put out some entertaining stuff. Stranger Things had a few good seasons, Altered Carbon had one good season, Know your fucking place, trash! We have the amazing anthology show Love Death Robots, and of course, Tiger King. There really is something for everybody on Netflix. And of course, Netflix being the bastion of diversity and inclusion that they are, they couldn't forget about one vastly overlooked community, pedophiles. Join me in today's video where we take a look at a new movie being released by Netflix called Cuties. It's about 11-year-old girls twerking. No, this is not a joke, though I really fucking wish that it was. The woke crowd is losing their goddamn minds. With each passing day, their grip on reality becomes just as fragile as their tolerance for anybody who does not hold the same insane political positions as they do. It's gotten to a point where the cultural outrage mob has pushed a goddamn tire company to adopt a certain political stance. So I don't really think that people should be all that surprised when we see Hollywood and the film and television industry not only adopting this crazed ideology, but actively pushing it onto its viewers. If you don't have Twitter, first off, good for you, you may not know what to expect if you search for Netflix while you're on Twitter. Let's take a look, shall we? Oh, Black Lives Matter, an anti-American Marxist organization that has been hell-bent on burning down the country over the last few months. Off to a great start, Netflix. If you spend a little extra time, you'll find some other information about a new Netflix cartoon show called Super Drags. Which, uh... Well, I think you can see for yourself what it is, but let's take a look at the description. In this adult animated series, three gay co-workers lead double lives as drag queen superheroes, saving the LGBTQ community from evil nemesises. How much do you want to bet it's going to be against white men, the evil white men trying to keep those poor drag queens down? Evil makeup and wig corporation run by a white guy and he's like, no more wigs for drag queens. I don't fucking know. <laughs> this show's so stupid. So stunning. So brave. Now, at least they clarify in the description that it's an adult cartoon, but it looks very childish, very kid-friendly, bright colors. It seems to contradict the notion that this is in fact a show made for adults. But what grown men and grown women do in their own time is up to them, as long as it's not harming others. I'm pretty libertarian in that regard. 
The problem is, is that something like this bleeds into the real world. Have you ever heard of Drag Queen Story Hour? This is something that started off in my home state of California, San Francisco to be precise. You have drag queens coming in to read stories to children as their ultra-woke parents sit there and they watch their kids as they stare very confused and wonder, why are these grown men dressed as women? Children that are far too young to understand what they're seeing, all the while these sick parents pat each other on the back as they plan their next wife swap and swinger session. That's right, Bill, it's your turn to fuck my wife tonight, but don't worry, I'll be sleeping on the couch. Children have been under attack for years now with these woke progressives pushing sexuality on them at younger and younger ages. And the most sickening part of this is you have gigantic corporations actively engaging in the sexualization of children. Netflix has become one of the largest offenders of sexualizing children and attempting to normalize children transitioning genders at incredibly young and disturbing ages. Recently, Netflix released this ridiculous video. It's a highlight of an episode from their show Babysitter's Club. Just take a look at this shit. It took a while, but we finally found a file for a Bailey Del Vecchio. Is 32 Burn Hill Road still the current address? Yeah. Have you been giving him fluids? If he's dehydrated, we'll need to place an IV. Have him change into this. I don't want the blue one. Um, well... I hear someone's not feeling well. Let's take a look at the little man. Can I please talk to you two outside? I know that you guys are busy, but as you would see, if you looked at her and not her chart, Bailey is not a boy. And by treating her like one, you are completely ignoring who she is. You're making her feel insignificant and humiliated. And that's not going to help her feel good or safe or calm. So, from here on out, please recognize her for who she is. And if at all possible, could you find me a non-blue hospital gown? I apologize. Am I dead yet? You have this stupid child woke explaining to medical doctors and nurses that the patient is a trans person. The writers of that show clearly have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Now imagine you go into a hospital, and you go in there because you're having abdominal pains, and you're a girl. You're a biological girl. But you don't tell anyone that, you just say that you're a boy. The doctor's gonna say, Oh, you're a boy? I guess we don't need to check for ovarian cancer then since you're a boy. And there's no way that you can have ovaries then. But of course, that's not the point of this. The point is to virtue signal. The point is to show how woke you are. Consequences and logic be damned. Speaking of lack of logic and no care of consequences, this brings us to this fucking abomination. Netflix's newest film called Cuties. Now I know what you're thinking. This has to be a joke, right? It has to be Photoshop. There is absolutely no way in hell that Netflix actually thinks that this is a good idea. There's no way that Netflix is supporting content like this, right? Well, surprise, dickface. There's an official trailer on their goddamn YouTube account. I'm not going to be playing this trailer on here because it's disgusting, and I'm 100% certain that you're going to end up on some kind of government watch list by even clicking on this, or fuck, we're probably all on the list for just watching this video, but whatever. Click on it at your own risk. There are many words to describe what cuties is, like disgusting, reprehensible, perverse, sickening, but I think it can best be summed up as pedobait. Of course, those are just some choice words that I have, but how does Netflix describe this film? Amy, 11, becomes fascinated with a twerking dance crew. Hoping to join them, she starts to explore her femininity, defying her family's traditions. Now, I don't know why I have to say this. It should be pretty goddamn apparent to people that aren't retarded. An 11-year-old and twerking should never be used in the same goddamn sentence, you sick fucks. An 11-year-old is not exploring her femininity by dancing in a way that mimics riding a dick. Netflix is blatantly putting this kind of sick, degenerate filth on their platform in order to show you that they are, in fact, the most woke out of all of the woke sheep. I guess this is where we're at now, though. A massive media organization attempting to normalize pedophilia. It was already bad enough that you have Twitter letting these subhuman map troglodytes onto the site, but I guess now it's, we're just beaming this trash into everyone's home. 
Clearly, Netflix knew they were in deep shit and they came out with this non-apology. We're deeply sorry for the inappropriate artwork that we used for cuties. It was not okay, nor was it representative of this French film, which won an award at Sundance. We've now updated the picture and description. Oh, right, so it was the artwork, huh? That's the upsetting part, right? Not the exploitation of 11-year-old children, you fucking pedophile sympathizing cockstains. And then they say that they made an edit to the description? Let's take a look at that. 11-year-old Amy starts to rebel against her conservative family's traditions when she becomes fascinated with a free-spirited dance crew. Oh my god. She stands up to her conservative parents. Oh boy, so con they're so conservative that they don't want their 11-year-old child twerking like a stripper. How horrible. What oppressors they truly are. And you gotta love that they dropped twerking from the description completely, and now they just replaced it by saying free-spirited dance crew. Nice trying, Netflix. You can remove the poster and change the description of your disgusting pedo bait filth. But this still exists in the film, and if you can't see a problem with that, then I would love to know each and every individual who greenlit this project. That way we know who to aim our displeasure at, who we need to talk to. And you just have to love that they throw in, but, uh, but it won an award. And it's a foreign film, so it's totally artsy. And it's, it's not low-grade porn for pedophiles. So this film won an award at Sundance? You mean the same Sundance Film Festival whose founder was arrested for sexual abuse of minors? Yeah, sounds about right then, I suppose. It seems that the film is really resonating with Netflix's target audience here. Just take a look at this review, where the reviewer says that they hope that they make a sequel before the actresses get too old. So I guess Netflix is getting what they want. And if you go on Rotten Tomatoes and read critic reviews, you're going to notice that not a single one of them, positive or negative, comment on how they're watching an hour and a half of sexualized children. These people, they're mentally ill. And you can find some people defending this garbage online, like this big-brained potato wearing the skin of a human. Right, so Cuties is actually against pedophilia, while having things like this in the movie. Yeah, makes total sense. Let's glorify hypersexualized children, all the while saying that what you're actually doing is saying that hypersexualizing kids is bad. Makes total sense, 100%. This makes complete sense if you have an IQ that mimics the temperature of soup left out on the dining room table after a few fucking days. Then you have others saying that it's actually Netflix's fault for marketing the film this way, and they show the French poster next to the American version, yet you still have children in skimpy clothing wearing bras on the outside of their clothes. It still doesn't excuse shit like this being in the film itself. Leslie here, like Netflix themselves, can't quite seem to understand that it's not the marketing that's the issue, it's not the poster that's the issue, it's the fact that this film exists and has not been yeeted into the fucking sun along with the writer and director and everybody else who is included in making this disgusting film. French director and producer Sylvain de Zerga, who gives a shit it's French, referred to just as Zangro here in this article, I guess that's a, like his porn stage name or something, spoke out about the selection process for the children in this film. He was asked, how did you cast the 11 year old female lead? And he responds with, the casting process was a saga. We spent over six months and saw 650 candidates. How did those casting meetings go? Did they tell parents Hey, um, your kid, your kid's gonna be twerking in this film. Yeah, um, we wanna teach your preteen child to look just like Cardi B. No, don't worry. This is going to be a film about how bad it is to have young girls doing this and dress like this and dance like this. We're, we're in no way making pedo bait. Me? No, I, I'm, I'm certainly not jerking off on set. That's not, that's not happening at all. I, I'm definitely not doing that. So this is now becoming an avalanche for Netflix to deal with. Angry customers have been pouring into their customer service, and the response from Netflix has been, uh, fucking weird. Absolutely insane, to say the least. When a user reached out to Netflix, they screenshotted their interaction, and it goes something like this. User, how does a movie sexualizing children get approved? Who signed off on this? Netflix. 
We understand that not all stories may appeal to all viewers, which is why we always invest in a diverse range of content from all over the world. We also provide ratings, synopsises, trailers, and controls to help our members make the right viewing choices for themselves and their families. User. Do you support pedophilia? A simple yes or no will suffice. Netflix. We cannot really comment on that, but while we believe in creative freedom at Netflix, we respect all religions and their cultures, traditions, and values. Okay, first of all, Netflix respects all religions and cultures? No, they don't. They literally made Jesus gay. And I'm not a hyper-religious person by any stretch of the imagination, but you can't say that you respect all religions and then make the Lord and Savior of one gay. Also, why in the fuck would you respect cultures that implement female genital mutilation and murder women for stepping outside of their homes for not wearing the right glad bag to cover them up enough? Does Netflix also enjoy throwing gays off rooftops simply because they enjoy a nice big dick? And second, how hard is it to say that you're against pedophilia, you skeevy hacks? You know what happens to someone if they call into my place of work and they say, um, hi, yes, uh, excuse me, sir, we're conducting a poll to gauge the public's stance on pedophiles. So, uh, sir, how do you feel about pedophiles? Fuck them. But can we be all that surprised that Netflix supports such deranged and deplorable work when they highlight creatures like Rose Demu, Damu, whatever. Here's a tweet that Netflix published by Rose. Hi, I'm Rose, a writer, trans woman, and former babysitter. Those Evanescence CDs weren't going to pay for themselves. Who needs to talk about episode 4 of The Babysitter's Club and why its depiction of a young trans girl made me cry happy tears? No big deal, right? Someone's happy to see trans inclusion in a TV show. Personal feelings aside when it comes to the trans issue, this is rather harmless. But when you actually look into who this wretched goblin is, you see a much darker side. Let's take a look at some of Rose's tweets, just a little slice of life for you here. Rose says, I'm a teenage girl stuck in the body of an almost 30 year old woman, stuck in a body of an almost 30 year old man. No, you are not a teenage girl, you are an adult man, and this age fluid garbage needs to stop. You don't get to pretend that you're of another age so you can prey on children. What am I talking about? Let me show you. In another tweet, Rose says, You guys, there's a teenage skater boy on the G eating yogurt, and I want him and his friend to breed me. What the fuck is this? How, in any sense, is it appropriate for a nearly 30-year-old man to be talking about wanting to have a threesome with two teenage boys? But of course, Rose here would just say, No, it's okay, I'm a teenage girl, so it's totally not pedophilia, I swear. Rose is a dangerous predator and has no place in civilized and an immoral society. Netflix is just a lost cause. This is a company that can't even admit that pedophilia is disgusting and reprehensible and that they don't support or condone such deviant behavior. It's situations like this where no matter what your religious or political beliefs are, we can come together and just look at Netflix and say, what the fuck is wrong with you? If this film was really about drawing attention to children being exploited in the film industry, then why isn't this a documentary? Why are there scenes of children dressed in clothing that is fit for a modern rap video? Why are they posing and dancing in such provocative ways, and why in the fuck is this film rated for mature audiences? Do not be fooled and do not let yourself be gaslit by pedo normalizers. This film is nothing more than thinly veiled propaganda being used to normalize the most disgusting crime carried out by the most sick and depraved among us. If you see this film and you do not see something wrong with it, then you are the fucking problem and you need a cure and that medicine is labeled 45 ACP. And that does it for today's video. This is not the video I was expecting to make for my first video back, but it had to be done. I have no idea how anyone thought this film was going to be a good idea, but I guess in 2020 I shouldn't really be that surprised by things anymore. As always, I want to know what you think about all of this. Let me know down in the comments below. 
If you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and if you really want to support my channel, hit that subscribe button and share this video on social media. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, by the way, at Metal Gear Mando, and as always, thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and until next time, I will see you in the next video.